What's up guys, I'm Matt Gary, and in this 10th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Common tutorial series, we're going to go over the domain layer in Salesforce. All right, guys, so welcome to this 10th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Common tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over the domain layer. Um, what it is, when you should create a domain layer class, how it differs from the service layer, among other things. So, let's get to it. <laughs> um, what is a domain layer class? This is something I think most people are very confused about. Honestly, I think that this layer is uh, the layer that, for some reason, people get very confused about more than more than any of the other ones. Um, so let me explain. A domain layer class is an object specific class. Uh, and what I mean by that is it represents a single object in your system, whereas service classes typically don't. You know, every once in a while you might have a service class that in a way kind of represents a single object, but Typically, it doesn't. Um, it represents, you know, cross-object functionality. Maybe you've got like a sales application or something, and there's like a, I don't know, automatic opportunity finder or creator or I don't I don't know opportunity profit calculator, whatever. That might span across a lot of objects. It could be opportunity, opportunity line item, um, quote, quote line items, things like that. That service could span across a whole bunch of objects, right? But your domain layer class represents a single object and only that single object, right? And um, if you've ever made this is a simplification. I'll explain this a little more in detail in a second. But if you've ever made a trigger handler uh, class in your Salesforce instance, you've kind of already made a domain layer class. Trigger handlers are, in a way, a domain layer class. They represent, you know, object-specific actions that must be taken, you know, on the insert, update, delete undelete, etc. Right? So domain layer classes are really trigger handler classes with the addition of object specific behavior. And this is where I think people get the most confused is what is object specific behavior? Right? Like, what does that mean? And I know I continue to use this example, but I really think that this example is the best one in Salesforce for the vast majority of people to grasp. So let's go over it. <laughs> in Salesforce, in the many implementations I've done, almost everyone uses the task object. And it seems, at least in my case, that almost every object has a different automatic creation of tasks. They want different things filled out for the subject. They want different um, fields on the task object to be filled out, filled out based on the object. So in this domain layer class that represents the case object, down here I have a create tasks method. That creates tasks in a case specific way. So if you have something like this, and that could be a, a lot of a lot of things, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But for this example, we're using tasks. Lots of objects have in your system probably create tasks and they probably create them in different ways. When you're implementing a domain layer, you would probably you would really want to put that on your domain layer. You'd create a domain layer class have a create tasks method here and um, then you know how for your cases you know you have an easy way to just grab 
the way to create tasks for cases. Great, right? You know exactly where that object specific behavior resides. And that's in your domain layer class, right? And now you always know, okay, if I need to create tasks in a way that's specific for cases, I can come here and get this logic and get it done. Great, right? This I think is the most confusing thing. Domain layer classes also, um, at least if you're using the Apex Common Library, um, and really probably should in all instances in my in my personal opinion, should also include in, in, <laughs> include include your um, trigger setup. So if you um, you know need on on before basically before insert or before update or whatever else that should really probably reside in this class too. And that way you have all of that kind of truly object specific logic housed in the same place and you know where to go to get that stuff if you need it. Um, it makes it really nice and organized and all that other stuff. So, okay. Domain layer classes, we figured out what they are. At their absolute minimal amount, they are trigger handlers. At their maximum amount, they're trigger handlers plus object-specific behavior. And technically, they could be one or the other. Maybe your case's object doesn't actually need a trigger, but you'd like to have your create tasks method stored somewhere that makes sense. Make a domain layer and store that object-specific behavior there. Maybe your case object doesn't need object-specific behavior yet, but it does need a trigger. Well. Um, that's fine. Put your trigger methodology in your domain layer class and, and work on it, right? Cool. <laughs> that's what the domain layer is, more or less. It's an object-specific implementation that represents both a trigger and object-specific behavior. Um, I don't want to go any further than that because I don't think we need to. Um, the other things that we should, um, I guess, go over is your options for domain layer classes um, as far as frameworks are concerned. Now, unlike the service layer, which we went over before, there's no frameworks that you could ever use for the service layer because it's business-specific logic that's specific to your business, so there's no way anybody could ever provide that to you. There is a way to provide, of course, like default logic, I suppose, at least for a trigger handler. Um, so there's a bunch of different options that you can go with here. My personal favorite, having taken the time to look at a lot of frameworks to get this layer in place is the Apex Common Library. I've spent way too much time, hundreds of hours, investigating um, several, uh, well, several, five or six frameworks and um, across all these different layers. And uh, the best one, in my opinion, is the Apex Common one. And it has nothing to do, it's just, I've spent a lot of time with it, and that's my, my feelings. I know everybody has a different opinion. But you can, of course, use the Apex Common Library, and they have the ability to go with the, um, you know, they provide you this S object domain class to get a lot of this work done, uh, like pre-set up for you anyway. You can also go with something along the lines, uh, you know, if you, if you don't want to go with the, Apex Common Library, which I fully understand. Everybody's different. Um, if you want to implement a domain layer and you don't want to reinvent the wheel, uh, there are some other libraries. The Apex Trigger Actions Framework is a, a pretty good one. The SFDC Trigger Framework is a very simple but very effective one. So if you're not like super comfortable, even after this tutorial series going through and using the Apex Common Library, which by the way, we will have a tutorial over the Apex Common, uh, how to implement this layer in the Apex Common Library, so the next episode. But if you, if you wanna start somewhere, this is probably the best place to start. It's very simple. Um, 
very straightforward. I do have a tutorial going over this one specifically. So I'll link that one as well. Uh, my tutorial for that anyway. Um, and then there is the My Triggers framework, which is also a pretty good one. Um, that's been around for some time. It's got some pretty decent support for it. So uh, those are my, I guess, four choices if you're going to implement the domain layer and you want to start somewhere. Um, that's where I would start. These different libraries, Apex Common Library, Trigger Actions Framework, um, SFDC Trigger Framework, and the My Triggers Framework are all great places to start and try try it out. Um, the SFDC trigger framework is by far the, the simplest one and it'll get you on the right path um, if you want to. But like I said, in the next tutorial we're going to go over the uh, how to implement the domain layer using the Apex Common Library. So hopefully it'll be a lot easier to uh, you know, do and it's not as confusing. Um, all right, I think we've gone over everything we need to go over in this. If you want some more information on, um, at least my opinion, on what the best naming conventions are for domain layer classes and transaction management and things along those lines, you can go check out the GitHub wiki. It's got a few, a, a little bit more information about that stuff. I'll link it in the video. And uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, sticking around this long. Hopefully this has made it a little easier to figure out what the domain layer actually is because I think it's a little easier when somebody explains it to you, but it's very, it is very confusing when you're trying to figure it out. And uh, yeah, next episode we'll go over how to uh, build one of these guys, one of these uh, domain layer classes using the Apex Common Library. So. That is it for today, guys. I, uh, I'll see you in the next episode.